The city of Red was a metallic nightmare, a maze of skyscrapers and wires that blocked out the sky, a place where nature had been erased and replaced by artificial substitutes. The air was now bar, a chemical concoction that filled the lungs with a metallic taste. The water was dilly, a liquid that flowed through pipes and faucets, but never quenched the thirst. The people were Baroque, a race of workers who live only for seven weeks. They had forgotten their origins and their purpose. They only knew how to work and survive. But survival was not easy and grim. The planet they called home. A hundred years ago, a mysterious phenomenon had struck the planet, reducing the lifespan of every Borok to seven weeks. No one knew why or how it happened. It was called Lagmabara the curse of death. The only hope for the Borok was Rao, a pill that came from the stars, a gift from a savior who had visited them long ago, a stranger who had claimed to be from another world. Rao was the only thing that kept them alive, but it also kept them enslaved. A young researcher working in a secret lab, she was the only Borok who dared to challenge Rang and its mysterious origin. She believed that there was a way to reverse Langmabara and restore the natural lifespan of her people. She muttered to herself, It has been seven years I have been doing research after research on Langmabara. Why is my research leading me nowhere? How is it possible that no one has information about it? We have a limited understanding of this phenomenon. She felt like she was hitting a wall. A wall that hid the truth from her. A wall that kept her from saving her people. She looked at the clock on the wall. It showed 11.59. She took a deep breath and swallowed a round pill. And she reset her timer. The next day, Kumla walked briskly along the street. She was on her way to the old library, hoping to find some answers to her questions. As she turned a corner, she stopped abruptly. There on the ground was a green leaf. She was taken aback. She had never seen a leaf before. It looked like a thin and flat piece of paper, but with veins and stem. She picked it off carefully, feeling its texture and weight. She clutched the leaf in her hand and ran towards the library. A flash of memory came to her mind. She had seen this thing somewhere before. The library was dark and dusty, with no one inside. She walked through the aisles of books, looking for the book. She finally found it on a shelf near the back wall. She opened it eagerly and flipped through the pages until she saw a sketch of a green thing, like the one she had found. Yes, I've seen this thing here in this book. What is it doing in the city? I thought it went extinct centuries ago. It was written in an ancient text called Borok that she couldn't read. But she could see pictures of trees and plants, things that used to grow on the planet before the rat. Maybe there was more to this book than she thought. Maybe it could tell her something about the past and the future. She turned another page and saw a picture of a place where trees and plants everywhere. It looked like paradise compared to the barren wasteland outside. Kumlu returned to her lap. She took the leaf to her laboratory and placed it in a glass jar. She hoped to preserve it and study it further. But after a few days, she noticed that the leaf had withered and turned brown. She felt the pang of disappointment and sadness. She had lost a precious clue that might have led her to some answers. That night, she had a dream about a man running towards his house. He looked worried and scared. We have to leave this place immediately. There is no other way. He said to his wife and children. He grabbed some belongings and a small tree sapling that looked like the one Kunglung had found. He led his family outside where they saw chaos and destruction. People were fleeing in panic. Buildings were burning. Soldiers were shooting. They tried to escape, but they were too late. The man was shot dead. 
he dropped the sapling as he fell to the ground. Kumlo woke up with a start. She realized it was all just a dream. Hey Naima, I had something to tell you. A week ago, while I was on the way to the old library, I found something which the ancient book featured. As far as I know, it went extinct 100 years ago. Could you show me what you're talking about? Yes, here it is. It was green when I found it, but now it has turned brown. I don't know why. I can't believe you found this in the city. Why haven't you told me about it earlier? As far as my research is concerned, it is a thing which was found during the age of Kakrang. As I delved deeper into my research about the age of Kakrang, I uncovered many mysteries that the Borok people were unaware of. Out of all the enigmas that I encountered, three topics stood out as particularly confusing and complex. Firstly, there is the story of a savior who introduced Rang. He saved the entire planet, yet his identity remains unknown. Secondly, there was the age of Kakrang itself. The texts do not agree with each other, and the more I dug deeper into my research, the more complex it became. Lastly, the origin of Langma Bara. Everything must have an origin to start, but this one eluded me. These mysteries consume me as I continue with my research. This thing you see is called a leaf. It is impossible for you to get it here without its source. You can see it in the book that you are holding right now. Its source is a tree. So it is called a leaf. Without a tree, there can't be a new leaf. You can say it's like human and it's hair. Leaf is the hair of a tree. Then how do you know about this green thing and what is it called? We are unable to read the content. I know you might ask this question. Something strange is going on in the city and the leaf you found confirms it more. Last week, I also visited the old library. To my surprise, I found a book which I had never seen before. Kakrang Zora is the name of the book. It means Kakrang Nizora or Age of Kakrang. You will know once you look at it. Why would a person write it like this? Its title and a page are written in Aulab, and the language of the savior who came to Grim long ago. And the rest is in Kogborok, our ancient language. Do you think someone did this on purpose? I have no idea, but I have a theory. Maybe the writer was someone who lived during the transition period, when the savior brought his people and his culture to Grim. Maybe the writer wanted to preserve some of the old knowledge and traditions in Kogborok, but also show respect to the new ruler and his language. Or maybe he had another reason that we don't know yet, but one thing is clear, he wanted to communicate a message through this book. Meanwhile, the city of Rat was in turmoil and the Borok were suffering. They were unable to work and as a result, they were unable to get the round they needed to survive. The situation had become dire and the borough were becoming increasingly desperate. It was then that an announcement was made on a large screen by an AI. The voice echoed throughout the city, causing the borough to pause and listen intently. Hi, citizens of Red. You have to reduce your consumption of rum because we are running short of it. However, you don't have to worry. If you keep supporting the government, we will provide the pills. Those who support us, come and get it. But remember, it is limited. You know what you must take to get life. It is life for life. The Borok understood what the announcer meant life for life. It was a cruel and brutal reality, but they knew they had no choice. They needed the rank to survive, and they were willing to do whatever it took to get it. The crowd searched for work, fighting and trampling each other in a frenzy to get to the pills. It was a scene of utter chaos, and the desperation of the Bora was palpable. As the dust settled and the chaos subsided, the Borok were left to ponder the cruel fate that had befallen them, life for life. It was a harsh and unforgiving reality, but it was one that they had no choice but to accept. The struggle for survival in the city of Red 
had become a fight for life itself, and the Bora were determined to win that fight no matter the cost. It must go on. They must never discover the truth. They were once the famous Mangtiara in history. Now look at them. They are tearing each other apart. But we are not done yet. We will only win when they are wiped out of this world.